Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to look at the component editor. You can find this under Window, General Editors, Component Editor. I'll go ahead and just open it up right now. So right now it's kind of empty. And I can click on these little tabs and they're all kind of empty right now because I have nothing loaded. You can see how down here this button says Load Components. So whenever you select some components in your scene, you can click Load Components and it will show them in here. However, if we go into the options, you'll see I have Auto Update turned on, which means that I don't necessarily need to say Load Components with Auto Update. Any components I choose will become loaded. And the reason why you might want to turn that off is if you want to see the components of one object but yet select the components of another without uh, changing the screen, you could say Don't, up don't Auto Update. And so when you load some one one object's components, it'll be in this seat, this screen here. You can save that over here while you mess with something else. That's why that's there. So first we need some components to load. Let's minimize this. I'll just create a polygon sphere. Like so. So now with my sphere selected, if I open up my component editor, you'll see nothing's changed when I click load components nothing happens because I still have not actually selected any components I just have an object selected the sphere the sphere is made of components such as vertices and faces and edges so I need to select some so I'm just going to grab you know a random assortment of vertices go back to my component editor nothing here yet that's because I'm in the springs tab and there are and each of these tabs kinda represents a different aspect in Maya that could use a component editor. So springs we're not dealing with, particles, weighted deformers, rigid skins, blend shape deformers, smooth skins, polygons. Oh yes, we're dealing with polygons. So now you see I have all kinds of numbers, like a big spreadsheet. And essentially what this is doing is it's listing every vertex that I have selected, and they're all numbered, and listing all these different attributes of those components. Vertex X, Y, and Z, this is literally the where they are. There's each vertice, each vertex has X, Y, Z coordinates of where they are in the scene. And that's what these first three numbers are. Alpha, you notice is all one. Alpha, alpha value of one means it's fully opaque. There's no uh, transparency on this vertex, which you can set here if you wanted to. And then normal X, normal Y, normal Z is the normal the surface direction of that point on the surface. And that's a bit more of an advanced topic of dealing with normals and alphas. The main thing we're kind of looking at right now is just how the component editor works, how it's laid out, and what, how it could be useful to you at all. So vertex 183, vertex 184, how do you really know which is which? And if you click one, it'll isolate it. So then you can kind of look around, oh here it is, right there, Vertex 183. But that kind of undoes your selection. So one way to kind of figure out which vertex is which, if there's a certain vertex you're wanting to look at, let's say this one up top. Select Vertex and just click this one at the top. You can see it's Vertex 381 here. Also over here on the channel box, if you click CVs, click to show, it'll tell you 381 and also gives you XYZ values. Now you'll notice that these XYZ values over here in the channel box are different than the XYZ value vertex X, vertex Y, vertex Z over here. And that's because the 000, zero you see over here is relative to where it, it began when you created it. And while this is in the world space, like this point right now, if I zoom out some, you see my origin right here this where these two black lines cross that's the world space zero 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 and so this point is moved over in the z-axis negative two you see down here you see the little blue arrow with the z-axis pointing to the left and so to the right of that is negative z so it's negative two point zero zero four four in the z-axis and then up and the y-axis 8.714 so up this far and then negative 1.254 in the x-axis which is going this way so this is literally tell you, you, telling you where in the world it is 
And while this is telling you, whenever you created this sphere, whenever I made this sphere, I have not moved it. And so these points are at 0, 0, 0 based on where they were created. So if I change this to 1 in the x value, hit enter, you'll see that that point moved over one unit in the x direction. Let me undo that. So now if I changed it to 1 here, you can double click, type the what number 1, hit enter, see it moved over quite a bit more is going to this point, the one in the positive x-axis in the world space. So let's make this five. Five. And you'll see over here that in the x-axis from the original, from the origin point of where it was created, it's going 6.25415, while in the world space it's only five units in the x-axis. So there's that's the difference. This is based on the object, and this is based on the world. In any case, vertex XYZ for this vertex 381. Over here we have advanced polygons, and it's very similar. You see you have alpha, normal, X, Y, and Z. We don't have the XYZ coordinates. And what this is doing is showing us, if you notice, this is vertex 381, VTX 381. But over here, this is a VTX face, 381, 380. 381, 381, 381, 382, 381, 383, so on. And what this is actually showing is all the faces that are connected to this point. And because we're dealing with the pole of a sphere, we have a lot of faces connected to that point. So I'm actually going to select a different point. This point here is 301. I know that because I could see that right here in the channel box. So 381 has four faces that are connected to that point, and that's what the advanced polygons tab here is showing us is those four faces. So 301 to 280, if I click that, you'll see that this little yellow dot appears. So this is telling us that this indicates this face, the lower left face that was connected that was connected to that point. If I click this one, you'll see it's referencing this face. And so we can adjust these alpha values and such on a whole on the whole face, not just the point. Well, when you go here, we're just dealing with the point. And again, this is just the component editor in relation to polygons. I mean, we could bring in particles, springs, rigid skins, and so on, and have lots of other things in this editor. But I kind of wanted to give it, give you like an introduction to the component editor so that whenever we talk about it later, you'll kind of know what we're talking about a little bit at least, and we can have a starting point to build on when we get to, say, blend shape deformers and use the component editor for whatever reason, then you'll know what we're dealing with. So that's kind of a brief overview of the component editor. Um, I guess one thing you could do with it, real quick, I didn't really show you anything you can do with, with the component editor as opposed to just showing you the component editor at all. So I'll just kind of select, say, all these points in this vertical row, like so, and bring up the component editor again. So go back to polygons tab, you'll see I have all these vertices selected and they're listed down here for all along the left. Let's say I wanted all these points to be aligned in the y-axis. And I wanted them all to align, let's say over here it's one, two, three, let's say, uh, let's say four in the x-axis. So what I could do is select the entire column, vertex x, type in four, enter. Now they've all moved to the four, four units in the positive x axis. They've all lined up. So that's a really quick and easy way to do that. So if you wanted to grab an entire edge loop, for example, let's say vertex y, let's change it all to 10. Enter. And they all get moved up 10 to the 10 units high in the y axis. Now this is really handy if you have very specific numbers that you want to hit for positions and such. There's also alpha for vertex alphas, which is a bit of a more advanced topic that we can get into eventually. And so you can adjust them on a per point basis or all at once. So definitely by clicking the column name, you can adjust the entire column all at once. You can also hold down control and deselect certain ones if you only wanted 
most of them, but not all of them. You could do second whole column, control click a couple of these things and say five, enter. Then only the ones that were still in the selection move down five units. And the ones that I deselected, which would be these over here, stayed where they were. You could click one, hold control, and click individual ones. Click them again with control selected to deselect them. I can click this one, hold shift, click that one, and select the entire row from the beginning to the end based on where I clicked. So, you know, it's basic kind of computer stuff that hopefully you'll, you already know about. And then you have a slider down here that you can adjust from a, just with a easy slider to use. But you'll notice that the, the number here is 0 and the number here is 1, which means that whenever I started clicking it, we're dealing with a 0 to 1 slider. So I can undo that. So I type in a number here, let's say negative 5, enter. And now my slider goes from negative 5 to 1. So I can slide a much broader range of values. So this slider is completely customizable to uh, whatever values you want to slide between for the component values here that you have selected. And over here in the far left it just shows you where you are on the slider. Right, right, now, right now I'm at negative 2.8684 on the slider. So yeah, I think that's pretty much the gist of the component editor. Again, like I said, it's kind of an introduction. And I hope you learned a little bit, and maybe you'll find some use to this. Feel free to continue to play around with the component editor and learn new things about it. And we'll get there eventually as we go over more of these topics, you know, particles and springs and such. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, any requests or uh, comments, I'm definitely open to anything like that. And thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.